Bob Bales here, and this is the Traveling Fool Podcast, where we talk about traveling off the tourist path. You know, visiting places that most people don't know about because, well, nobody ever told them. And today, I'm going to give you some tips on how to do just that. So stay tuned. Hi, Bob Bales here, and this is the Traveling Fool Podcast, where I'm going to be telling you about places that are off the tourist path. Places people don't know about because, well, nobody ever bothered to tell them about them. And over the next few episodes, we're going to be talking about places that I have personally been to, and a few that maybe I haven't been to, but are real interesting, and I want to go there. But I thought I might start out the podcast by giving you a few tips on how to travel off the tourist path. Now, you can call it many things, whether it's experiential travel, immersion travel, traveling off the beaten path, or as I like to call it, traveling off the tourist path. A lot of people are looking for authentic travel experiences. I actually wrote a blog post about this recently on my blog, so I thought I'd bring it to you on the podcast. Now, there's been a big surge in travel companies and tour operators promising to deliver you the adventure of a lifetime. Unfortunately, a lot of this is just marketing hype, and what's delivered is, well, basically a manufactured experience. Maybe it was a love of exploration or just seeing new things. I've pretty much been traveling off the tourist path my entire life, and there's no big secret to traveling this way. You don't have to shell out big bucks to some tour operator to experience it. But there are companies that will charge you a lot of money to experience authentic or experiential travel when in fact it's anything but. I mean, if a company is organizing a group of people and taking you to an authentic local village, what they're really doing is just creating a tourist attraction based on what people's perception of the area is by bringing a bunch of people together and selling you something in one location. I'll give you some examples. I went to Cancun, beautiful country, Mexico, and Cancun is by far a fabulous place to go if you just love beautiful beaches. But while you're there, you can book tours to the Mayan ruins, and you can even book a tour to a Mayan village where they will tell you, we're going to go and experience a Mayan village that's authentic. What you find is everybody loads up on a bus, they take you to some village where there's booths set up and there's trinkets that are sold by the locals. Every day, busloads of tourists come to experience this authentic Mayan culture, and after one bus departs, another one pulls up. And that's not really an authentic experience. Or how about companies that take you to some faraway place to do volunteer work? I know there was a cruise line several years ago that is set up to take you on a cruise to an exotic Caribbean destination where they would also set you up to do volunteer work on a farm. You help a farm cooperative by day, and then you head back to your resort or the cruise for a big dinner buffet that night. You know, it seems to me that all they're doing is parting you from your hard-earned money to do something that you can pretty much do yourself. You don't need to pay somebody to go and do volunteer work. In fact, You can practice doing this in your own hometown, and many of you already have. I mean, when was the last time you dined at a small mom-and-pop burger joint or bought something from a local farmer's market? In a way, that was experiencing an off-the-beaten-path destination. Now all you have to do is take that way of thinking to your next travel destination. So I'm going to give you seven tips on how to travel off the tourist path on your next trip. First one is very simple. Walk. It's real simple. You just get out of the resort, leave your hotel, and walk around. I went to London several years ago, and I spent a week just walking around town, exploring and seeing the sights. And for me, it was real easy. What I did is just went down, bought a one-day ticket, which allowed me to get on and off the tube, and I would look up, find a place that I recognized just by name, and I would get on the tube and head out there, and when I got there, I would get off and walk around. 
and it would be places like Trafalgar Square. So I would get off close to Trafalgar Square and I just walked there. And I discovered a lot of great places, many of which I would have never seen otherwise. I found myself walking past Downing Street, home of the Prime Minister. I also walked past the historic Horse Guards building and happened to walk past it when they were doing the changing of the guard. I found a great local fish and chips place and a whole lot more. Did you know that across the river from Westminster Abbey is the first prison in London? This prison's been in operation since the 12th century until about 1780 or so. It's called The Clink. The Clink now is a museum, and I found it because of a very small sign on the street that just said Clink Museum. So I decided to check it out. That's when I discovered it used to be a prison. Ever wonder where the term the clink came from? People get people have heard about being thrown in the clink or I just got out of the clink. Well, that's where it came from. And I would have never known it had I not been walking around and just exploring the city. And I've done that no matter wherever I go. I've done it in Asia, I've done it in Europe. I've done it in the States. When I go to some town in the States, I'll just get out, walk around, and discover places. That's one of the best ways to find off the beaten path places that most tourists just don't know about. The other thing is talk to the locals. When I travel, I talk to everyone. The housekeepers in the hotel, people working at the hotel front desk, taxi drivers, People in restaurants, just about anyone. I ask them where the good places to eat are located, interesting things to see and do. If I need to buy something, I ask them where the best place to go shop is. The locals can tell you a lot about the place that's not listed in the guidebooks. Who has the best food? Where to get the best deals on things if you need to buy something? And that works no matter where you're at. Whether you're in Germany, Thailand, Missouri, or Texas, just talk to the locals and they can tell you the best places to go. Also, just check out a map. I know maps are a thing of the past nowadays with everything on the internet, so you can Google it, look it up, but just check out a map. Look at a map and check out places nearby that are not readily known. I'll give you a quick example. Several years ago, some friends and I visited Greece for a couple of days. We had rented a car, and the car had a little GPS system in it. So we decided while we were in Thessaloniki to get out of town and just explore the countryside. We picked a place on the map at the very end of a little peninsula and said, well, let's just drive there. I had no idea where we were going. We just wanted to get out and see the countryside and get out of the tourist area. Well, the GPS took us through all kinds of little places. Took us through fields and everything else since the GPS wasn't all that accurate. But one of the places it took us was to a very small little town. I don't even remember the name of the town, but it was a really cool little place and they had a lot of little photo ops. So we stopped to take a photo in this town and there was an elderly lady that noticed us taking a photo and she had a little garden, a little uh, vineyard across the street from some houses. And she was in her garden tending to her grapes. She came out, spoke very little English, but she asked us what we were doing. We told her we were some tourists, that we were Americans. And we just were out looking at the town. And we thought she had a very beautiful little town. So she decided to go get her son, which spoke better English, and we wound up talking to her and her son for about an hour. She gave us some grapes to eat, some homemade wine to taste, asked us all about where we were from. We asked them questions about the town and everything. And we had a blast just meeting the locals and learning about the town that we were exploring. And then we took off, drove some more, and wound up at the end of the peninsula, which was really beautiful. I had a little bitty church at the very end of this peninsula that looked out over a uh, over the a GNC. And the church was, I don't know, 
real small. It probably could only hold about five or six people. But we would have never discovered these if we hadn't just got out and went exploring a little bit. Another good tip is to use Google, and all you have to do is type in alternatives to and put whatever you're looking for. So everybody knows that there's beautiful beaches in Cancun. Everybody knows that when you go to the Philippines, one of the most beautiful beaches is Boracay. It's listed as some of the most beautiful beaches anywhere in the world. But if you don't want to see where all the tourists are at, and if you don't want to go where all the crowds go, go to Google and type in alternatives too. I checked this out when I was in the Philippines one time and I was looking up alternatives to Boracay, alternatives to Palawan, which I had been to and it was a beautiful island. Well, one of the things I discovered was a little island called Bantayan Island. And Bantayan is a very small island with gorgeous beaches and a laid back lifestyle. And it's very well known to Filipinos, but it's not a destination known by a lot of foreign tourists. It's a small island off the coast of Cebu that's only reachable by taking about a one and a half hour ferry ride. It has three small little towns on the island. One that has a few little resorts and hotels, another little town on the northern tip of the island, and the main town of Bentayan. There's only a few expats running around, and I only saw four other foreigners other than the guys that were living there when I was visiting the island. One day I rented a scooter and rode around the entire island, stopped, talked to the locals, and you talk about getting looks and everybody waving and wanting to talk to you. When you're one of only a few foreigners on an island, people are very interested in meeting you. I went there initially for three days, loved it, wound up spending about a week there. So using Google, you can find some great alternatives to some of the more well-known tourist locations, get off the beaten path, and have the time of your life. Another tip, use public transportation. And that doesn't mean just taking a taxi. I've ridden on trains, buses, ferries, tuk-tuks in Asia, motorcycle taxis and trikes, uh, banca boats in the Philippines. I've ridden on all kinds of public transportation. Taking public transport allows you a couple of things. First, you can stop along the way when you see something interesting and you want to explore it. A lot of cities, in the U.S. and overseas have these hop-on, hop-off buses where you pay a flat rate for the day and you can explore the town. I'm actually headed to Savannah here in a couple of weeks and they have a great hop-on, hop-off bus that runs through the historic district of Savannah. Pay a flat rate, you can get on, get off at any of the stops, walk around, explore the area, go back, get on, and hop off somewhere else. It's a great way to explore. You know, once when I was in Prague, I looked on a map and saw there was a town of Pilsen nearby. So I went down to the train station, bought a round trip ticket for a few dollars, and took off. And the reason I went to Pilsen is because it's the home of Pilsner beer. Now, if you like beer, Pilsner beer, Pilsen's the home of Pilsner beer. I mean, it's the Holy Grail. There's, you have to go and visit it. So I went and visited the home of Pilsner Beer, took a tour of the brewery, also found some great museums, one dedicated to General George Patton, a museum that uh, was founded by a guy who just didn't want people to forget about the history of the town. Has some great places to visit in the town, fantastic places to eat. There's some underground tunnels and caverns in the town, and it was just a cool place to visit. Cost me two or three dollars for a train ticket to go there. I explored the town for the day, then went back to Prague that afternoon. Besides meeting some great people on the train, the town was just a blast to explore itself. Here's another tip. Don't stay at a hotel or a resort. Try a homestay or rent a condo. If you really want to experience the local area, then get out of the hotel and resort and book a homestay or just rent a condo. Many places offer homestays where a local family will put you up and you live in their home. I was lucky enough to go on a trip to Nepal. 
I actually went twice, but on the first trip, the highlight of my trip was a homestay. We went to a small town and stayed with a family overnight. The family consisted of the mother, father, son, daughter, and grandparents. The only one that spoke English was the daughter who was in her first year of college, and she was my translator. She wound up walking me around town, giving me a guided tour of the little town and pointing out all the history, introduced me to all her friends that we passed on the street. When we got back to the house, I helped the mother cook dinner. We sat around looking at family photo albums, and the grandmother gave me some of her homemade liquor, which I tell you, I fell in love with Granny. I was about ready to bring her back to the States and open up a distillery. It was fantastic. But I had a great time learning about their family and how they lived in their town. And it didn't get much more authentic than that. I also stay in condos or apartments a lot. I've done this a lot in Asia. And I'm not talking about Airbnb. Many places, all you have to do is an internet search for short-term condo rentals or holiday rentals. And this takes you away from the Airbnbs because there's a lot of condo rental businesses where they manage condos for people that have bought them but just rent them out when they're not staying there. So I've stayed at some fabulous condos in Asia. The ones I stayed at were in really great neighborhoods and a condo is great because it gives you more than just a bed to sleep in. I mean you've got in many cases bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, living room, sometimes a nice balcony and you can walk right out of where you're staying at, go to the local market, and get food to cook, which saves you money eating out. Plus, going to the local markets, you meet a lot of the locals. And that really immerses you in a local area. And that's some of the best ways to get immersed in a local area. Now, if you're taking a road trip, here's another tip. Get off the highways and take the back roads. I do this a lot when driving to a destination. Instead of staying on the interstate or some major highway, check out alternate routes that take you on the smaller highways and roads. I've discovered some really cool little small towns and met a whole lot of nice people by just taking the back roads. There's a little town in Texas that's off of Interstate 35. Interstate 35 is the main inter interstate that runs from Austin to Dallas. But there's a little bitty town on this little country road that's not very far from the interstate called Wahlberg, Texas. I went to Wahlberg and there's one intersection with a stop sign and it's a very small little country town. But it is a really cool town to explore and that's the day I met Ray. Ray is the unofficial mayor of Wahlberg, Texas. He knows everybody. He knows everything about the town. He knows the history of the town. And I met Ray at his gas station that he owns and operates. And Ray kind of took me under his wing and just decided to give me a tour of the town and tell me all about it. Ray was a very interesting guy. And I had so much fun. I went back here the next day and spent another several hours with Ray. Now, it may take you an hour or two to get more to get to your destination than traveling on the interstate, but you can really discover some interesting things when you take the back roads. From little small roadside stands, small towns with interesting histories, traveling off the back roads can be a great way to travel off the tourist path and to find those elusive off-the-beaten-path destinations. So you see, you really don't have to pay a tour company an exorbitant amount of money to give you some manufactured experience, or you don't have to travel to the depths of the Amazon to get off the beaten path. You just need to channel your inner explorer a little bit and adjust how you get your next destination. Take one or two of these tips, try them out, and I guarantee you, you will find an off the beaten path destination and something that you will definitely remember for years to come and it will make your travels a lot more memorable. I appreciate you listening. 
Over the next few episodes, I'm going to be telling you about specific places that are off the beaten path that you can travel to and why they're really cool. If you like these episodes, hit the subscribe button, leave a review on iTunes, and tell me what you think. This has been Bob Bales with the Traveling Fool Podcast. Until next time. <laughs>